Hey fellas, welcome to part three of Monogram's 172nd scale space shuttle with boosters build. In this exciting episode, I lay down the thermal blankets. Now, I had a plan A, and I had a plan B, and then a plan C, and then I just decided to go with what I got here. So, <laughs> I spent a lot of time experimenting, doing some testing, and all kinds of stuff, and I finally settled on a hodgepodge of uh, a a mishmash of what uh, uh, Duty Cat did with his and then using the tape instead of other stuff. So uh, I think it's turned out okay. I'm happy with it. Um, like I said, I spent a lot of time on trying to figure this out and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm generally happy with what, it, what, what, uh, what we got here. It'll look better once it's painted, by the way. So anyway, um, Enjoy the episode. All right, so here comes one of the more challenging parts of building this kit and trying to add a little bit more realism than obviously what the, the monogram kit gives you. And that is going to be adding the surface, or the, uh, the thermal blankets, otherwise known as the AFRSI, or Advanced Flexible Reusable Surface Insulation. Now, if you don't know what that is, I've got a picture here. So this is what I want to replicate on the, uh, the shuttle. It's a fabric. I believe it's like a three inch deep fabric with different layers of, you know, whatever for, for uh, heat resistance. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking to, uh, to replicate now. It's very difficult to do. It's, there's a couple different methods. Uh, obviously, there's the, the tape method using the medical tape, which I have here and which I am going to settle on, but I'm also going to add a little bit, um, I'm gonna change it up a bit from the last one now. The the last shuttle that I did, I didn't really like how the tape turned out. So if you can look at that, it's just kind of messy. The uh, the tape tends to fray right along the, uh, the edges and it just doesn't look very neat. Now, what my plan was, was to do uh, something that uh, Duty Cat did on his, which was lay out the uh, the strips of styrene, glue them down, then he he sprayed on some thinned down um, squadron putty, thinned down with lacquers, and then he used a Zimmerit tool to uh, to uh, create the fabric texture. Now I planned on doing that, and I was instead of spraying down the uh, the putty I was going to spray down Mr. Servicer 1000 or 500. Now I tried that and I really hated the look of it. Uh, I couldn't get the Zimmerit tool to work very well. So what I'm settling on is the tape, but I am going to use his method of laying down the uh, styrene strips. Now trying to determine the map of <laughs> where all this stuff goes. Now this picture shows all the where all the uh, the uh, thermal blankets are in the dark gray area. However, it doesn't lay them out tile by tile. Now I did do some research and uh, another modeling site had uh, different sizes laid out and they had three basic sizes. They had a three by three eighths inch by three eighths inch, a half inch by half inch, and then a three eighths by half inch uh, tile sizes for this model. So I just cut some out on a plastic card, just kind of like a reference. And that's the same thing I did for this one as well. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm laying this out. As you can see here, I've laid out my strips and I uh, put them down as best and it's not gonna be 100% accurate. I mean, uh, if you're looking for a complete accuracy, you've come to the wrong modeling channel because I'm never completely accurate about stuff. But um, I think this is gonna be okay. And I think with some, some uh, uh, strategic painting later on, I'll be able to at least somewhat represent what those tiles are supposed to look like. So what I have, I have them drawn out over here on the other side, how I wanna lay them out. So that's where I'm going to lay my strips. I'm going to do a little bit of, I uh, still got some more to outline. And I'm also going to put some back here. And uh, hopefully that will at least give the impression that 
those are the thermal blankets. Now, here is the tail fin that I've, I've got painted, and I've got a gloss coat on it. Now, I did put down the decals, and, you know, they're, they're okay, but uh, with this decal sheet, they don't give you, like, the tiles, like on the, the, uh, the previous shuttle that I did. So what I ended up doing is having to paint, mask and paint, all these little tiles on the black part, because they don't give you that. They just give you the white tiles. And uh, so I got the decals for the white, and then obviously I painted the, uh, these other ones. And then I've got my thermal blankets laid down. So how I'm trying to limit the amount of fraying that I get is I'm just spreading, I'm, I'm taking the, the widest part of the tape, and we'll go through all this later, and I'm laying it down in one section, and I'm hoping that these, these uh, raised portions where I glued the styrene strips down are going to give that impression of different tiles. And then I'm going to come back and paint, pick out different tiles and paint them a different color. In fact, I've been experimenting with this like for the past three days. And I've stripped this off and I've, I've redone it. And I'll show you a picture of what I, what I had. And there's some more pictures that I'm kind of using as a reference of the Columbia uh, on here as well. But let me see, where is that? My album's recent. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about. That's not a very good picture. So here's what I'm talking about. Just picking out different tiles and uh, and painting them with like that was with a smoke color so we can get a better picture of it so I think that's gonna look okay uh, it's not gonna be the best solution and uh, you know there are a number of different solutions I've seen some people use uh, uh, different types of tape uh, some uh, linen cardstock I've even I've even looked at doing that but nothing really looks very neat. And I want a little bit neater, and I think I can achieve my goal with this. So at least, uh, you know, it may not be 100% accurate, but it will, uh, I think it will look okay. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to get to, I'll show you how I cut the strips and how I lay those out, and then uh, how I lay the tape down, and then what I do um, to uh, try to create these using my method. All right, so now I'm going to be cutting some more strips, and I've already got a bunch cut left over from the last time. This is all this is is point uh, zero one zero plastic card, so it's the real thin stuff. And I've cut strips that are about a millimeter wide or so, and I've cut some that are a little bit wider to use in different areas. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my ruler, and I've got this fancy Westcott ruler that uh, obviously it's see through. And it's got a little metal edge along all along the side. I forgot, I think I got this on Amazon, but it is a must-have. So I'm just going, going to cut thin slivers. I use a sharp X-Acto blade. Now the key is, is to not press really hard. You just score the plastic card. And there you go. That's all there is to it. And I'm not measuring it out. I'm doing it by eye because I've cut enough of these that I know pretty much what I need. And they don't have to be perfect, perfectly uh, one millimeter. As long as they're close, it's going to be good enough. So that's all there is to that. And I'm going to uh, cut some more of these so I have plenty. And then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how I apply them to the model. Okay, it's Ringo. Ringo's trying to eat the tripod and he's shaking the camera. So I have to <laughs> film this. This is my second take. So how I'm doing this is I'm just laying down my plastic card strips along the lines that, uh, that, I'm, uh, that I have mapped out. And I'm taking some Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. Ringo, don't you even think about it. And then I will just run a bead right along here. And I'm just going to go down the line. And with my X-Acto blade, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure to get the, the uh, plastic card to set. And what I'm going to end up doing is once I get all these down, I'll come back with some sandpaper 
and I'll sand these down just a little bit so they're not all just even to give a little bit of uh, variance in, in it. And as you can see, I've got some larger strips right along the edge of the cargo bay door. And, uh, and I've cut out sections where the hinges are. Now, the, what I used for hinges was just stretch sprue that I glued right along where each hinge was going to be. And this is as simple as that. This one probably needs to be moved down a little bit. There we go. And this doesn't have to be exact. I mean, I guess if you're a rivet counter, then you'll want them, each one of the tiles exactly the way they are in the real thing, but I couldn't find any any map that specifically said, you know, this tile goes here and this size tile goes there. So I'm, I'm basically winging it. Now, there's a smaller tile apparently back here. So I'm trying to be close, but you know, you guys know how I roll. And then I can just lift this off. There we go. Now, to, uh, for these smaller sections, what I'll do is I'll just lay down some of this, and then I'll take my strip. What are you getting into over there, Ringo? I'll set it down, and then I can just come back with my knife and cut it. And easy as that. So that is how I'm creating this these uh, separation of the tiles. So it's really not that that hard, or and it's it's actually kind of relaxing to do this. It may seem like it's a lot of work, but it's, it's really not. <laughs> it's just a matter of, matter of uh, repetition. And it's one of those weird things about modeling that I actually kind of like doing this. I don't know why <laughs> it's tedious so but uh, there we go and I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these done I'll get these on the uh, the back end done as well and then once I do that we'll come back I'll sand them and then I'll show you how I lay my tape out okay now I've got all my strips laid down take a look at it here and it, uh, even though I used the, the uh, thinnest plastic card I could use, I still want to knock it down just a little bit. Because if I leave it like this, it's just, I think it's going to be too much. So I'm just taking some 320 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to sand it down just a little bit. I don't want to sand it completely away. But I want to knock it down so I get more of a, just as a small amount of raised detail underneath the tape. All right, so <coughs> I've sanded this, I've knocked it back a little bit. You can see I've got it back here, and it's... The, uh, the placement probably isn't completely accurate, or at least, at least the, uh, the overall general appearance and the location, I think, is pretty close. But, um, you know, when you get down to each tile where each one's located, it may or may not be accurate. So, um, either way, I think, I think it, will, um, it will serve its purpose. So, I've got that knocked back. And what I'm using now is some cloth tape. Now, a lot of people that build this kit will use this for their, for their tiles. And this is the same cloth tape that I used for my other one. I bought this a, uh, a few years ago when I, when I built the other uh, kit. It's from 3M Next Care, and it really just says durable cloth tape. I think it's athletic tape or medical tape, but uh, probably got it at Walgreens. But that's what it is, and to give you a close-up of what it looks like, so there's the texture. 
Now again, it's not exactly like the uh, the uh, thermal blankets, but uh, again, it'll give you the idea of, of what we're going for. So when you open this up, I've got a uh, glass cutting board that I've got here that I use for certain things. And you really need to place this on a glass surface. And when you roll it out, there's a ribbed edge that you need to get rid of. So what I do first is I just roll it out on my cutting mat. And I will take an X-Acto blade. And then you can lift this up. Now, if you don't have a sharp X-Acto blade, it will leave frayed edges. So you got to constantly be changing up your X-Acto blades, especially if you're cutting on a glass surface because it will dull your blade really quick. And this stuff is sticky. And if you put it down and, and paint over it, the... Uh, I'll show you how we paint over it, but uh, it will leave a residue that you have to get off and it's just kind of a mess. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this, lift it up, get this stuff out of the way. Okay, and I will try to do this on camera as best that I can. But I'm just going to start at one end, and I'm going to try to put these on in as big a pieces as possible to limit the amount of frayed edges that I get. So I'm just going to start working this down. right along the opening of this cargo bay door. And it does lift up pretty easily, but like I said, once you, once you start adding solvents to it, it does tend to leave a residue. Now I'm gonna to have to cut out these sections where I've made the hinges because I don't think those are actually covered by the blankets. Okay, so then I'll just come along here and I'll rub it. And I'll rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. Press it down, it does conform really well to these raised surfaces. Okay. And then all I have to do is take a sharp X-Acto blade so I'm going to get a new blade out and I'm just going to go along that raised surface just on the outside. And I'll come up here. I'm probably going to end up cutting that off as well. And I will just peel the excess off just like so. And that should leave me a pretty good edge. Now, again, if you don't have a sharp X-Acto blade, <laughs> it, uh, it'll fray. But that's all there is to it. And I'll go ahead and do the same right here. And I don't know how much of that I got on camera. Hopefully I got it all, but...
You really don't want to do this like I'm doing, going over it more than once. Yeah, that blade is dull already. So hopefully we didn't cut into that. Okay. All right, now I'll probably cut this off right here and then put another piece right along the top so my seam runs along the raised surface. And uh, so that's all there is to it, guys. Now I will, uh, I'll put the rest of these on. It's gonna take me a little bit and then I'll cut out this, uh, these sections right along where the hinges are gonna be. Just like that and uh, we'll come back <clears throat> and then I'll throw some Mod Podge on it I'll hand brush some of that or you can use white glue and uh, that will seal it in and make sure uh, at least give it some kind of resistance to uh, to uh, absorbing all the paint we're gonna throw on it so that's how that's working all right now I've got all the tape applied and this was rather difficult back here I had to use four different strips and there's going to be a line in here somewhere so I'm just going to have to deal with it. Now <clears throat> like I showed you on the the previous one that I built I cut out the tiles individually. Now I also tried that with this one. I tried a bunch of different stuff with this just to see what I liked and uh, you know I really this is the um, I think this is the the best thing that I'm going to be able to come up with right now but uh, I'm sure there's something out there that, that would look a lot better, but it is what it is. So anyway, I've got uh, I've got all of the tape on, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Mod Podge. I called it Mod. I usually call it Mod Podge because it's more fun to say. So I'm gonna use Mod Podge, and this is the mat. It's basically white glue. I don't really think there's any difference between this and like Elmer's. And I'm gonna use this to seal it in. So. All I'm going to do is hand brush this on and I'm not worried about brush strokes because this is a fabric and it's supposed to uh, it's supposed to be somewhat uneven and let me grab a q-tip because what I'm going to do with the q-tips is when I get the glue on the uh, on the plastic area that's not going to be the cloth texture I'm going to wipe it away I'm just gonna wet it and then just wipe it away because I don't want brush marks on the non-textured surface. But I do wanna get in and get the edges. This is gonna fray a little bit, but once I put my primer coat, I will, you can, you can if they're not too bad, you can take a real sharp X-Acto blade and trim it a little bit. But I mean, it is gonna fray. That's just dealing with this fabric. And I don't know if there's any type of sealer that you can use that would prevent it from fraying. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know. Obviously, it'll be too late for this build, but... So I'm just going to brush it on. Get a nice coat on here to seal it in. That way, when I go to put my primer coat on and my subsequent paint layers, the uh, fabric doesn't just absorb and soak, or the uh, the paint doesn't absorb into the fabric. It actually sticks to the surface and doesn't soak in. So that's all I'm doing with this. I'll go ahead and get this coated. I'll lay down a primer coat and we'll take a look at it when I get back. All right, now we got it primed up. And it is ready to get painted. Look at that. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think uh, now that I got the white primer on the uh, thermal blankets, I think it's going to look pretty good. So what I used to prime it, uh, my, my final primer coat was Steinol Res. Now, I don't typically use this, but uh, 
you know, for this case, it's such a big model, I didn't want to waste a bunch of white Tamiya paint. So I threw this uh, Steinol Res primer, and I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's it's it takes a little bit of you get getting used to to uh, to put it on. You got to spray it a real high air pressure, but uh, you know it's it's uh, pretty smooth. I I wet sanded my first primer coat, and then I can't, I need to probably come back and just take a light, uh, real fine sandpaper, and come along and sand up sand off some. Uh, few little rough spots where I can feel some stuff, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. I think that's going to look pretty good. So on the next episode, uh, we will paint it. I was going to wait and, and paint it after I get the boosters all put together and the uh, fuel tank, but you know, I'm here, I'm at this stage. I think I should be rewarded by getting to paint and decal it. So the next episode will be nothing but paint and decals for this monster. So I will uh, see you then. Thanks for watching, fellas.